I'm uh, really flattered and, and honored to be here today. And so many familiar faces. Um, I will say that uh, you're, you're a president, uh, quite an athlete, and uh, I, I notice you can tell you what year that he was a state champion. Uh, I won't either. Before, before I get going, though, I wanted to recognize uh, three people that had a profound impact on my life while at Bethany. And as that as things turns out, well beyond that. Joyce Pig, coaches Gary Sambo, and Ted Kessinger. Thank you, you guys. With a show of hands, let's see who we have in the room. With freshmen, raise your hands for me. All right, sophomore, juniors, a lot of juniors, seniors. That includes fifth year seniors. <laughs> okay, good, thank you. As a student, do you ever wonder why you're here? In other words, why did you choose Bethany? It's a fair question. You had lots of college choices. Small schools, big schools, far away schools, close to home schools, specialized schools. For some reason, you chose Bethany. So how should you feel about that choice? Of course, since they chose me to speak, you can probably guess my position on men. I've got good news for you. I'm going to tell you that of all the choices that you've made already, you chose well on your college selection. I believe that because I believe that Bethany can provide you with an exceptional education and life experience that will allow you to accomplish nearly any vocational goal and personal endeavor. Now that's, that's a tall order. My job today give you some perspective on that opinion. First, let me summarize a few of my professional adventures. Throughout my career, I've been blessed with the opportunity to lead dozens of employees, to buy and manage my own businesses, consult to a wide range of companies, assist with the funding of multiple ventures, and my favorite, work with some exceptional people. I got my start working for a business consulting firm in St. Louis, which was a result of a senior internship. After a couple of years, I went back to get my MBA. Not long after graduate school, it, it was time for me to venture out on my own. With a partner at age 27, I co-founded a consulting company. I remember my father-in-law being slightly more interested and me making a living for his daughter than exercising my entrepreneurial streak. I got over that. I went, in, went on to buy a healthcare business, became a CFO of a wireless telecom startup, Dr. Leonard mentioned, and later served as a CEO of an early stage tech company. We grew from eight to 30 employees over five years. Real thrill for me. Today, I co-own a small services business and manage my own investment banking practice. I serve on the board of a couple different company, companies as well as the Salvation Army of the Greater St. Louis region. All of that sounds great, maybe, to you. But my story would be incomplete <clears throat> if I didn't share that I also had a few professional challenges along the way. Sometimes you don't hear about those. Let me tell you, failure will put you to the test. You draw down on all those relevant life experiences when that happens. For me, many of them were from athletics. The truth of the matter is that my failure provided some of my best learning opportunity. Don't be afraid to fail. Oddly enough, my Bethany experience started in Ottawa, Kansas, 
where I grew up. There's lots of stories about how I ended up here, but I've only got 35 minutes to talk to you this morning, so I'm going to pull off on that. My dad, that was a joke. It's <laughs> <laughs> My dad was an English professor out of the university. And both parents were big readers and encouraged us to explore and pursue our vocational interests wherever that took us. Both preached the virtues of, get ready, liberal arts. Now let's stop right here. I bet the seniors in this room have heard liberal arts while at Bethany. That, that phrase, how many times? 200? Enough already with the liberal arts, okay? What does it really mean? Well, here's a definition for you. The academic course of instruction at a college intended to provide general knowledge in comprising the arts, humanities, natural sciences, and social sciences, as opposed to professional or technical subjects. Yeah, but will it get me a job? It seems awful squishy, doesn't it? Can I compete with my peers from other problems? That's the real question. During college, I was sometimes envious of my peers at other schools with areas of study that would apparently lead right into a job, maybe nursing or engineering. I kept wondering, am I missing something? No. Initially, Bethany, for me, represented a chance to play football. I wouldn't fully understand until later all the other benefits that came with my college decision. I showed up with literally no idea of what my major should be. Fortunately, I was assigned by Dr. Joyce Pig. Now my encouragement for you students today is to get to know your faculty, your coaches, and staff. It's one of the real treasures of Bethany College. Dr. Pig was a wonderful vocational advisor, teacher, academic mentor, and a friend. Years went on. She helped me understand that it's possible to disagree about politics and other touchy subjects, but still have a meaningful dialogue. I'm waiting for her to reverse her position on several things. I, don't think <laughs> I carried two majors when I was here because I couldn't decide. Maybe I thought majors would go important. Business Econ's one and political science history the other. Until my final semester, ended up with the business econ because of the job that I was pursuing. During my Bethany time, I attended a semester in Washington, D.C., traveled to Sweden with a football team, and completed an internship led to that first job. I'd encourage you to go out and take advantage of all these other external things that you can do while at Bethany. When I showed up at my first job with a business consulting firm in St. Louis, I actually realized how little I knew about business. I was a little disappointed. Of course, I knew the basics of economics, accounting, and finance, but I had something even more valuable. My secret weapon was that I knew how to read, write, and calculate, and to think. Okay, let's get off of me for a minute. Let's talk about you and this world that you're about to go into. Some of you have sooner than others. In case you've been under a rock, our world is changing just a little bit. You may have heard that we are living in exponential times. Just a few items for you to consider. You may have heard some of these. For instance, China will soon become the largest English-speaking country. We have five times the number of English words today than during Shakespeare's era. A publication called Science Daily recently reported that a lab test used to detect disease and perform biological research could be made more than three million times more sensitive because of nanotechnology. How about the Arab Spring and the related uprisings? The related dynamic political and socioeconomic shifts that we're seeing in the Middle East and Europe. Europe's a whole other time. For the first time in US history, once you millennials enter the workforce, you'll be one of the four generations working together. 
say, how do you get ready for all this? Millennials, also referred to as the Gen Y group, that's you. You tend to be optimistic, have confidence, and tendencies towards teamwork and community. That's good, you'll need those traits. Perhaps more importantly, you'll be required to adapt and to think. And by the way, by 2020, not that long from now, the millennials, that's you, will represent about 40% of the workforce. So I want to share with you five observations that I've made about this world as it relates to preparation of college and just general preparation. This is not exhaustive, just a few things to consider. Writing matters. Yikes, some of you are crawling under your chair. It's true. I mentioned I had went to get an MBA, and I can tell you with certainty that Bethany provided me an education that forced me, required me to write. And I was, even people that might be have been smarter, superior to me in other areas, I could write better than that in graduate school. It didn't make me better, just more capable. Today I find myself shouldering projects because I'm the one that can write. And it takes work. I'm not a natural writer. But with hard work, writing is important. Here's what tech industry CEO Kyle Wynans said in the Harvard Business Review. He's the CEO of a couple different companies. This article reappeared in the Wall Street Journal recently. Here's what he says. Everyone who applies for a position at either of my companies takes a mandatory grammar test. Grammar is relevant for all companies. Yes, language is constantly changing, but that doesn't make grammar unimportant. Good grammar is credibility, especially on the internet. And blog posts on Facebook statuses and emails and on company websites. Your words are all you have. And this is my favorite part of it. They are a projection of you in your physical absence. And he continues, for better or worse, people judge you if you spell, punctuate, and generally write well. I found that people who make fewer mistakes on a grammar test also make fewer mistakes when they're doing something completely unrelated to writing. I thought that was interesting. Number two, critical thinking is rare. And what do we mean by critical thinking? Here's a fancy definition for you. Critical thinking is the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, blah, blah, blah. Really, let me boil it down for you. Can you solve problems? Better yet, can you define the problem? Do you understand the other side of the argument? Can you think conceptually? Do you ask questions? That's a critical thing. Number three, interesting people flourish. Make yourself interesting. For some of you, that may be harder than for others. No finger pointing, please. A colleague of mine who regularly hires millennials said this to me recently. He looks for kids who are interested. What does that really mean? What we're saying is that people who have some depth, some breadth, they learn to converse across a broad base of subjects. Read a nonfiction book once in a while, or take a class outside your major. If you're a music major, go to an athletic event. If you're an athletic event, go to a concert. Like it or not, depth of personality and likability are reasons people get hired. I don't want to make this exclusively about the workforce, as important as that may be. Making yourself interesting might just also make you a better friend or a better parent. Well, number four, you may end up with a different vocation than when you started. 
about a year after I got out of Bethany, I sat for and passed the CPA exam. I had to take accounting classes in St. Louis to just be able to sit for that exam. And if you would have told me in college that I would have done that, I might have had an argument. I hired a guy recently for the service company, we mentioned a guy by the name of Ray. Ray was a music major from a Missouri institution. He got out, decided he did not want to teach. He drove a school bus, became a school bus mechanic. That wasn't enough for Ray, so Ray learned how to be a riverboat pilot. He then went back and got an MBA in finance. Ray has been the best employee that I've had. Today's top jobs might not have even been around a few years ago. As one writer puts it, we're preparing kids for jobs that don't yet exist to use technologies that haven't been invented in order to solve problems that we don't even know exist. Number five, be ready for change. Or perhaps just be ready. We've already talked about some of the things going on in today's world. I mentioned that I served as a tech company CEO. On the topic of change, I was hired by this company the day before 9-11. Now this company had an airport security project, product. A lot of purchase orders in the pipeline. Some of you guys are too young, but 9-11 was a major game changer in our world and certainly in the security industry. Some said, wow, that's great, 9-11 happened, this company's product will go crazy. Well, it didn't, it just did the opposite. We had to re reinvent our entire business plan. We had big customers that were rescinding their purchase orders to us. The government took over security and it was a totally new game. That was change. Now, each one of these five areas that I mentioned, writing, critical thinking, breadth, vocational, Versatility, and what I'll call change management, are disciplines and characteristics in which Bethany's environment flourishes. Again, congratulations for your choice to attend Bethany. But your import, important choice did not end with this decision. You see, you're accountable for extracting all these wonderful professors, but, but all these wonderful professors, coaches, and staff have to give. We all might make choices every day. What path are you choosing? I truly believe that Bethany is a special place to build a foundation for a career and a life. Go pile up some good choices and even have a little fun while you're at it. And before closing, I have to share a critical piece of background that holds my whole world together. Although a Christ follower since a child, I've been on a wonderful faith journey over the past few years. A faith journey that was encouraged and strengthened by my, my coach, Ted Kessinger. You see, we've got this God that is really big. And he created this whole universe. And somehow he knows each one of us. And he pursues us relentlessly. He's real, and he's alive, and I pray that his love and grace is revealed to each one. Thank you so much for the chance to come. Have a great day.